Number 11, figuring out the equilibrium amounts for x and y. x, initial we start off with 0 0.5, final we end up with 0 0.25, so there is a, de a decrease in 0 0.25. So when 0 0.25 of x is used up, twice the amount of y is produced because of the ratio 1 is to 2. So 0 0.5 most of y is produced. So the final concentration is 0 0.5 moles per dm cube of y. Once we have these numbers, we substitute inside the equilibrium constant expression. Remember to square the y because of the 2 here. So 0 0.5 square over 0 0.25, we calculate it to be 1. And then it could be a or c based on the kc value. We check the amount for y for A, the equilibrium amount is only 0 0.25. We want it to be 0 0.5, which is um, shown in C. Number 12, magnesium carbonate and strontium carbonate heated. When they are heated, they form their oxides. Magnesium oxide and strontium oxide. Down the group, for group 2, the carbonates gets harder to decompose, so the decomposition temperature for strontium carbonate is higher. This is between C and D. When they form their oxides and they are added to water, hydroxides will be formed. And which one changes the pH or affects the pH more depends on which one is more soluble. As you go down the group, it is easier to dissolve. So strontium hydroxide will dissolve more and then it will increase the pH greater than magnesium hydroxide. So the change in pH for strontium will be more. Thirteen, we have the thermal or uh, disproportionation. That means something is oxidized and reduced at the same time. We focus on the iodine. Right? The iodine is the one that is oxidized and reduced. The hydrogen and oxygen, neither oxidized nor reduced. So we try to form two half equations, HIO becoming I2. Focusing on just the iodine, it was plus 1, it becomes 0. But we have to balance the iodine because it is, it is the iodine elements that are losing and gaining electrons. So to balance the iodine, I need to put a 2 down here. So for plus 1 to become 0, you need to gain 1 electron. But since there are 2 of them, two of them here, I will need to put a 2 electrons on this side. 2 electrons so that they will have this change. Okay, each one iodine gains one electron each. But since we balance by two, we will need two electrons here. Then we go to HIO becoming HIO3. This is plus one. Iodine in IO3 is plus five. <laughs> so the iodine is already balanced. One iodine, one iodine. In this case, this iodine will need to lose 4 electrons to go to plus 5, to increase by 4 units. So, losing 4 electrons, I will put the losing 4 electrons in this manner. So, once we have this, we know that the reduction half equation can be merged with the oxidation half equation if the electrons are the same amount. So I multiply this by 2 throughout becomes 4 4 2 so that we have the same number of electrons and then we will know that for 2 moles of I2 1 mole of HiO3 will be produced. If we need the information, actually, 5 moles of HIO is involved. Okay. 
in this case we do need the information of m anyway we only need n and p Fourteen. decomposition of your group 2 nitrates when group 2 nitrates decompose they form the oxides nitrogen dioxide and oxygen gas in this balance equation so we start off with 4.1 gram number of moles for calcium nitrate will be 0 0.025 the solid will only be referring to calcium oxide nitrogen dioxide and oxygen are obviously gases so we just need to calculate that this is also 0 0.025 and we multiply by the MR of calcium oxide we will get 1.4 grams of solid remaining why does magnesium hydroxide dissolve in ammonium chloride but not sodium chloride this is because there is the presence of ammonium ions in ammonium chloride ammonium ion can or some parts of it will donate a proton so it's actually a slightly acidic solution and when it forms an acidic solution it can react with your base magnesium hydroxide causing it to dissolve Sixteen, chlorine reacting with potassium iodide. Chlorine is more reactive halogen than iodine, so it will be able to displace iodide. We will form chloride ions and iodine um, element I two. So iodide is oxidized to iodine. Chlorine is reduced to chloride. 17 we have electrolysis and we have molten strong strontium form strontium is from group 2 way at the bottom it is a very reactive metal so we need an atmosphere of argon to make sure that the strontium do not react with oxygen because other otherwise the hot strontium will react with oxygen to form strontium oxide okay. keeping it in the an atmosphere of argon will prevent that from happening so option is D 18 what statement about bromine is correct bromine is a covalent simple covalent compound induced dipole interaction so it will be soluble in non-polar solvents so A is wrong bromine vapor is more dense than air bromine look at the MR is about 160 BR2 air can be estimated to be somewhere between nitrogen and oxygen okay. so we estimate it be about 30 so it's much heavier than air bromine will vaporize easily because bromine has a low boiling point and gases bromine is actually brown color reaction of sulfuric acid with sodium chloride when sulfuric acid concentrated with sodium chloride will get NaHSO4 and hydrogen chloride in this case the acid is only behaving like an acid it donates a proton the HCl will not be further oxidized in the case of sodium iodide it will first behave like an acid donating a proton and then after that it reacts with the hydrogen iodide form it oxidizes the hydrogen iodide based on the second equation so in the case of sodium iodide it behaves like an acid and then an oxidizing agent
Number 20, how many structural isomers can we have for this molecule? I draw, I draw out the five possible ones. Okay, you can pause the video and compare whether you have all these five configurations. Notice we don't have to take care of um, chiral carbons, mirror images and all that because they only want structural isomers. So you should have all these five. Twenty one. Which compound can be synthesized from an alkene by addition reaction? Answer is B. One two dibromobutane because the bromines are on neighboring carbons meaning they can actually come from an alkene, the double bonds. Right, those that come from the same, th that has bromine on the same carbon, or bromines on carbons that are too far apart, non-neighboring will not be coming from alkene, because the double bond has to be between two carbons side by side. 